Hey, it's Jeff Canato with another NLB Mini talking to you about X-Men Days of Future Past. This is the, what, fifth X-Men movie now? Uh, based on the incredible Chris Claremont, John Byrne storyline uh, back in the 80s, early 80s, uh, from Uncanny X-Men issues like, what, 141, 142, I think, something like that. Uh, I actually own those comics. Uh, they're in the attic at my dad's house in, in boxes, in long boxes. Um, and loved those stories, loved those stories. <clears throat> this is ostensibly based on those. However, it's very different. In the original Claremont story, uh, Kitty Pride comes from the future to the present to prevent a cataclysmic future for mutants where sent- sentinels hunt them down and it's this post-apocalyptic wasteland of well, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but it's Kitty Pride, and she's coming from the future, where, which is ironically, I believe in those stories, 20, 2013, 2013 that they're coming from, um, and is being her consciousness is being put back in the younger version of her body, which is like this 13-year-old girl who's just freshly become a member of the X-Men. Okay, in the movie, similar... But it's Logan, it's Wolverine now, who needs to come from, who's coming from the present into the past, 1970s X-Men First Class era X-Men, to save a possible present, which isn't our present, a different present, but maybe it's kind of the future, although it's the, it must be the present because all the young X-Men are the same age, but Logan has white in his hair, so maybe he's older, or maybe that's just a cool nod to the John Byrne version of uh, Logan that was drawn in these original comics, or maybe because this is a crappy version of the present, he's just really stressed out and his hair got gray. Don't think about it too much. This is a movie that asks you, don't think about it too much. Uh, it stars everybody. Uh, crazy amounts of really amazing actors. Everybody that's ever played an X-Men, basically, is in it, except uh, no Nightcrawler. Um... And it's really funny, actually, to watch the end credits to see uh, whose agents had more power, uh, see the the ordering of the names, uh, because it's not based on who had the most screen time at all. In fact, I won't spoil it, but there's a tiny, teeny, tiny cameo, maybe less than two full seconds on screen of an actress and she's got like fifth or sixth billing in, in this incredible parade of amazing actors. So clearly she had a very powerful agent. Anyway, what are the things you want to know about this movie? First of all, is there a post-credits scene? Yes, there is. Is it worth staying around for? Not really. I think it's foreshadowing. I think I kind of know what, it, what it's about. But it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't, it's no big revelation. Is the movie good? Yes, the movie is good. Is the movie great? I wouldn't say it's great. I think it's very, very good. This is a movie that starts off with a bang. In the same way that Brian Singer's X-Men 2 starts off with the best action sequence in that entire movie, Nightcrawler going through the White House, bamfing around, uh, this movie starts with the best action sequence in the entire film, which is always a bummer. I think James Bond movies do that a lot, where it's like you set a high bar and then you never reach it again, Uh, but man, that action sequence is amazing. It's in the future. It's a lot of cool mutants that we haven't seen before in the movies, Bishop and Blink and a lot of these cool mutants, um, Kitty Pryde being awesome. And it's powers. It's crazy powers, crazy powers, crazy powers doing crazy powers stuff. Uh, And you get, like, Portal with Blink. Amazing stuff. Uh, Just spectacular scene. And I sat there going, oh, my God, this movie's going to be amazing if this is the the bar. Never quite reaches that again, but it's a lot of fun. And it feels smart, even though it isn't particularly. Because it's it's a movie that if you think about it a little bit too much, everything falls apart. (laughs) But... It feels like smart people doing smart things. You get like a cool heist. You get uh, a fun... Oh, introduction of Quicksilver, who is also going to be in Avengers 2. We have two different um, properties that that both have rights to the character. So there are going to be two versions of Quicksilver on the big screen. As much as I have faith in Joss Whedon, he's going to be hard-pressed to make a cooler version of Quicksilver. Because the Quicksilver action sequence in this movie is awesome it's fun it's whimsical it's a cool display of his powers it's it's really really cool uh i won't spoil it but it's awesome anyway so the movie clicks along at a cool pace we get 
fun juxtapositions between the uh, olden time versions of Magneto and Professor X and the future versions of them. Uh, we get we get fun Wolverine irreverence. You know, he's like dealing with time travel in a way that you don't really see people deal with time travel in movies where he's like, yeah, I'm from the future. Deal with it. You know, he's like, he's not making any pretense. He's not pretending. Um, and we get a really fun kind of convoluted plot about, um, you know, trying to prevent a murder so that bad stuff doesn't happen, which is all well and good. And we're having, we're clipping along and having a great old time. It just sort of peters out at the end. The ending is, I felt very weak and doesn't really make sense. And X-Men movies have always really been about clashing of ideologies, right? It's, it's Magneto's ideology versus Professor X's ideology. It's the, we have to fight to protect uh, ourselves or we have to be passive and helpful and uh, earn the respect to help ourselves. Um, and that isn't where the clash of ideology really even happens. Even though it's set up that way, it doesn't really pay off that way. In the end, I feel, really peters out. I also have a real issue with the design of the Sentinels. I thought they were pretty terrible looking and it's and a shame that it didn't go with the classic comic book design because those are so iconic at least to me and we're supposed to believe that these were created in the 70s and yet they don't look like the 70s tech at all it would have been really cool to make them look kind of throwback in 70s but they look straight out of the the future straight out of a computer is what they look they look like irobot you know um but as much as my gripes are that the ending sort of meh nah, this is a lot of fun. It, it really is a, a fun movie, especially if you compare it to other summer blockbusters this year or in previous years. It's a notch above pretty much every summer blockbuster that's come out yet. Um, and, and it really it has, a, has a good time. It has fantastic actors. And it has a, a, a series of events and plot that are uh, constantly throwing you for a loop and having, having fun getting to their destination. Unfortunately, the destination isn't particularly interesting. So, you know, I, I can easily recommend this if you are an X-Men fan. I didn't like it as much as X-Men First Class, but I think it's, it's right up there with the better X-Men films. And it, it, just seeing all of the crazy amount of people that they mashed into this movie, even in little cameos, like I don't know how they got everyone to sign on to do something. Uh, there's a lot of people that get short shrift. There's a lot of people that you see on the poster that's like, oh, you get about two minutes of them. But that's okay. It's just jam-packed. It, it, it makes it feel like X-Men comics where characters can just show up because they exist in that universe. And that's pretty darn cool. Um, it's just if you think about it too much, nothing really makes any sense. Uh, because I feel like people could have gotten out of problems they were in much easier and nobody's motivations seem to really make a difference. Anyway, I'll be doing a spoiler-filled review on next week's Slash Film podcast, so uh, you should check that out if you want to hear details on what I didn't like so I don't spoil it here. But the good news is, if you like X-Men movies, you'll likely like this one. Uh, it's a lot of fun, great actors, and fun action sequences. See you next time. Don't forget to like and share this channel with your friends. Why not? <laughs>